Hi everyone, this is Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group Weekly Update for the week ending July the 9th, 2021. What an interesting week short being uh, coming off of the uh, 4th of July, a long weekend. Uh, holidays was a short week, but um, a lot of volatility uh, with 10-year rates, the Fed rates changing, bottoming out, uh, a, a, a tremendous sell-off, and then bam, uh, like a Super Bowl bounce uh, to close out the week at record highs. Where do we go from here? Well, let's get into it. Okay, this week we saw Treasury rates really plummeting. So a lot of the money is moving from ultra short to five plus years in duration. And that really had an impact on, on yields. Uh, they started to, to try to normalize here late on Friday. Or actually, earlier on Friday, they started uh, behaving again. Uh, they've been trading within a certain range. Uh, we really, uh, you know, they, they bounced off of uh, what would uh, function as a long-term support level for yields uh, if they traded like equities. You could look at, li at it like that. And, um, and so that, that generated the recovery back in, in, in big tech, okay, big, uh, large caps and the S&P 500 uh, uh, and the NASDAQ ended up uh, up on tops, record highs again for the week. Uh, what, what, what we're seeing is a growth in large cap. Momentum trade in large cap continues, but the value in mid and small cap may be trying to pick up steam. So where do we go from here? The S&P 500 is already topped out by consensus estimates. One outlier is still looking for 4,400 by the year end of 2021, but <clears throat> we can only see we're not that far away from that. So that leaves a lot of time in 2021. What happens there? Do we just go sideways? Well, let's look at the at each angle. Then the bears see two weak S&P 500 sectors, dramatic earnings plunge, COVID spiraling out of control overseas and inside the United States, excess speculation. Bitcoin, AMC, GameStop, expanded retail trading in meme stocks, real estate lending, uh, corporate borrowing, uh, you know, K a K-shaped economy amidst all of this, and income inequality, it continues to increase. If you go to uh, fred.stlouisfed.org, fred.stlouisfed.org, You'll see their chart there showing 1% of the population holding between roughly a third of the aggregate net worth of the country. So that doesn't bode well long term. However, the bulls see nine S&P 500 sectors with double digit you know, Q2 2021 earnings outlooks, COVID variants and the unvaccinated population being the impediments to growth, Fed remaining accommodative, Employment's improving, although it's a little spotty, and the COVID saga ending in 2021, except for some uh, lingering variant worries. All right, so what to do? Well, there's this acronym called TINA, standing for there is no alternative. All right, we must deal with, with, with the futures. So here are the positives then. The U.S. 10 years still running low. It hasn't uh, breached really 1.5%. So it's hanging in that 130 to 150 channel. Consumer inflation is most likely going to stay under the Fed's statutory target. It's, as of this week, it looked like those concerns are over our shoulders. So does this keep us range bound for the rest of the year? Well, corporate balance sheets are flush, not like they were in 2008. Employment rates are increasing faster than expected. The Affordable Care Act is now because of Supreme Court decisions and additional, uh, the American Rescue Act, so additional legal help from Congress. Uh, so there's a bigger safety network of sorts for COVID-19 patients if the downside on the coronavirus uh, continue, you know, develops all right, or occurs. Now the negatives is that growth, global growth issues may be endless. This deal in Japan uh, really took its toll on the markets this week. Uh, that announcement that uh, we're going to have an, a spectatorless Olympics uh, didn't help any of the, uh, any markets anywhere. Uh, U.S. deficits, uh, we were, uh, you, you would have never been able to imagine this kind of spending in such a short period of time. Um, and and the U.S. consumers could turn cautious and tighten up again. And if there's a big risk-off trade, 
And you're going to see these huge ETF funds like, like Kathy Wood's ARK uh, funds uh, being the most high beta ETFs out there. They're going to take some severe hits. So let's look at then some scenarios. All right. So where do we go here? Looking two to three to four years out, most likely everyone keeps spending. We return to pre-pandemic uh, patterns, except for there's an oversupply of office building and retail space. The housing construction tails off because the current rates uh, of construction is just more than the population growth is going to be able to support faster productivity growth as pandemic jump starts the widespread use of technology and people just accommodate that and adopt that into their very uh, everyday lives and then unemployment returns to below four percent by 2025 and all along the fed doesn't uh, jump the interest rates uh, dramatically that scares everybody off now Let's look at the best of all possible worlds, a popular idea, but very unlikely, at least unlikely to occur. Okay, at least likely to occur. Okay, so the best of all possible worlds, the labor force would grow faster than expected um, in, in the previous scenario. Uh, and the government infrastructure spending could be higher. Therefore, consumer spending could remain stronger for longer and global growth could recover faster, keeping prices in check. That's really going to be the key there. But probably, the, uh, you know, that's not likely to occur. So let's go to, if we had the most likely to occur, then let's go to the unlikely to occur. And so we're looking at that as people refusing to reenter the workforce, either due to retirement or too much health risk, Operating costs increasing due to procedures to keep disease in check. Supply chains, again, overloading. That limits production and growth. And the new shape of the economy uh, being a reality. Previously valuable technology and buildings no longer are profitable. So old machinery and old production uh, 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 wherewithal and capital investment no longer profitable. And that's going to reduce capital available to those kind of businesses. Inflation continues to rise, and, Fed, and the Fed has to raise rates sooner than they would, and, and that's going to have a resulting decrease in demand for interest-sensitive goods. And that scenario could run several years. So roughly, the first scenario I presented, let's say that's most likely it's over 50%. Okay, The least likely scenario um, would say half of that. Okay. And then the, 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 the best of all best, let's say that's a 10 percenter. And then let's look at the worst of all worst possible worlds, another 10 percenter, okay? And so in that least likely worst world of all possible outcomes, Americans become complacent about the disease in other parts of the world because new variants rise weakly. Current vaccines are generally effective against those new variants, but the tweaked vaccines become frequently necessary. And then variant scare causes people to return to social distancing and stop purchasing goods and services because that they, uh, those that they perceive as risky activity. This could result in a GDP drop of 25% by the year end 2021. Uh, government response is muted because of the confusion and the, and the political turmoil and corporate balance sheets weaken rapidly and that causes a traditional more slower recovery from the recession and that causes consumers to permanently reduce spending on travel entertainment food accommodations and the economy painfully readjusts to this new dystopian normal all right like i said a bleak picture but the least likely to occur uh is the worst of all personal uh, worst of all possible worst outcomes, as was the best of all possible best outcomes. So where do we go from here or there? All right, now that we've gone through those, well, we trade the markets as they present themselves. Nine factors, nine sectors have superior earnings in the S&P 500. Other segments of small and mid caps are presenting themselves as double digit options for growth. Energy, we got into some energy trades today uh, in, a, in a personal account, okay, in, in terms of exploration and production. That's uh, presenting opportunities now, as that hasn't in, in years, okay. So um, 
we jumped on. Now, those corporate bonds are looking quite risky. Municipal bonds may be okay, but uh, you're going to have to probably hold those to full duration if you're actually going to come out uh, other than um, uh, really getting beat up on those. Uh, but that's, that's not very appetizing to many, uh, yours truly in, in, included. Commodities, um, let me just say gold, I'm a seller, but there are a lot of other types of commodity trade that looks promising. If you want to know these sectors and you want to know these opportunities, go to assetguidancegroup.com, complete a form there, and contact us. You'll love doing business with us. Just ask any of our clients. Go out there and look on the About uh, page of assetguidancegroup.com. You'll see what people have to say about us. All right, that'll be a wrap for this week. Watch out for the rain and the storms as Elsa moves on past us, and I'll see you next time.